Anyway, I decided to offer you the grant. Really? Well, there, there is just uh, one small stipulation. I have to break up with Charlie. Hey, you got one right. Friends has some iconic moments. It also teaches us economics. This is part of a series where we're looking at economic lessons from Friends. And here we are looking at public choice theory. Public choice theory is really the application of economic reasoning to the political decision making process. In many ways, it makes total sense. We are applying the same criteria we would to any individual, that an individual's goal is to maximize their utility, their happiness, subject to various constraints. It would assume, then, those in political positions want to maximize their happiness, subject to whatever constraints are on them. The key caveat, of course, is their utility might not be consistent with maximizing the public good, which is often what public officials are entrusted to do. Uh, Nobel Prize winner James Buchanan had a very good quote on this. Politicians and bureaucrats are seen as ordinary persons, and politics is viewed as a set of arrangements, a game, if you will, in which many players with quite disparate objectives interact so as to generate a set of outcomes that may not be either internally consistent or efficient. Let's go ahead and watch the clip, and then we'll discuss. Hey, hey, guess who's a finalist for a huge research grant? I'll give you a hint. He's looking right at you. Huh, well, unless it's the creepy guy with his hand up his kilt, I'm going to say congratulations. <laughs> oh, I'm so excited. I, I mean, apparently I beat out hundreds of other applicants, including five guys I went to graduate school with. Not that I'm keeping score or anything. Five. Wow, that's great. Yeah. So tell me about the grant. Well, okay, it's for $25,000. And if I get it, I'll finally be able to complete my field research. Huh. And there will be an article about me in the Paleontology Review. Huh. Yeah. It'll be the first time my name is in there without people raising serious questions about my work. Wait, are you talking about the Dewar grant? Yeah, why? Benjamin Hobart is administering that grant. Your ex-boyfriend? Yeah. So your ex-boyfriend is going to determine if your new boyfriend gets this grant? Wow, your new boyfriend is screwed. No. See, there are still several areas that haven't been fully excavated. Break up with Charlie. Uh, what? What? <laughs> Did you just say break up with Charlie? Well, yes and no. Yes, I did say it, and no, I did not say it. Um, kind of inappropriate, don't you think? Listen, I'm sorry. I just haven't seen her for so long. All these feelings are rushing back. I'm starting to realize how much I missed her, and I'm going to need you to break up with her. Are you serious? If you say yes, then I'm serious. If you say no, then I'm joking. No. Joking it is. <laughs> so the selection committee has chosen the three of you as our finalists today. The ultimate decision will be based upon the answers you give to the questions I ask here. We're going to start with Dr. Lee. Dr. Lee, you claim the field is too reliant on the Linnaean taxonomic system. How do you propose to correct this problem? Well, I believe that the answers lie in the osteological evidence. I plan to begin there. Interesting. I guess. <laughs> Dr. Biley, your proposal includes some field work. Where might that take place? Primarily in the Pierce Shale region of South Dakota. Certainly. Very well. And Dr. Geller, when is my birthday? <laughs> what? I... Uh... Care to venture a guess? <laughs> May 12th? That's not even kind of close. <laughs> oh, hi. Hello. Uh, have you come to ask me some more paleontology-related questions? Uh, your grandmother's nickname, perhaps? And Margaret's pant size? <laughs> I've come here to apologize. I think I may have let my feelings for Charlie interfere with the interview process. No, stop! <laughs> Anyway, I decided to offer you the grant. Really? Well, there, there is just uh, one small stipulation. 
I have to break up with Charlie. Hey, you got one right. <laughs> I can't believe this. I never should have broken up with you. I think about you all the time. I mean, do you ever still think about me? No. <laughs> yes. What? I don't know what to say, Benji. This is all so romantic. Or... <laughs> Listen, I know I may be way out of bounds here, but is there any chance you would take me back? Maybe. Sweetie, this conversation is starting to make me a little uncomfortable. <laughs> oh, God. I am so sorry, but... I mean, it's... There's so much history between us, you know? I'm sorry, too. <laughs> I, I love you. I love you, too. Okay, that's it. We are seeing other people. <laughs> so before we go into it, I, I hope you noticed some of the issues that were here and how it ties into public choice theory. A couple key things we'll talk about. First, let's talk about Dr. Benjamin Hobart. He is entrusted with evaluating grants based on their merits. Uh, we're, we're not told whether he's paid for this or whether it's an honorary position, but the government is giving out money. The government's goal is to give the money to whatever person can do the best job within the rules that were created. Benjamin, Benjamin Hobart is in charge, and clearly he is not doing that. He is seeking to maximize his own happiness by leveraging the fact that he is reviewing the grants in order to try to get back with his girlfriend, his ex-girlfriend. Uh, clearly not ethical, clearly an abuse of power, but also it kind of makes sense and it's part of an issue you might see here where somebody who's in the government process would be thought of as you know, hired into this to maximize the public benefit, instead is maximizing their own utility. Is it's another it's also an example of what we call the principal agent problem, where somebody is brought in to do a particular role, but their incentives aren't quite the incentives of the you know, the person or the entity who hired them. Clearly see that here. Second case where we see public choice theory coming up is with the idea of rent seeking. Uh, rent seeking, there's a couple different definitions that you could find on this wherever. It's when anyone engages in an activity that's not productive in order to win a prize. Uh, I like the definition that I saw here, I'll link in the description, that an entity seeks to gain wealth without any reciprocal contribution of productivity. And that's exactly what we see here out of Ross. And really, you could argue out of the others who wrote the grant. You could, you could maybe make some argument that the grant writing process contributes a little bit towards it. So it's not completely wasted, but much of that time would be not productive, not, um, not productive for society. It's simply trying to win the prize. Really, the whining and dining part that they talk about um, Ross's girlfriend, Charlie, says, well, we could take him out to dinner uh, to help influence him to give Ross the money. That is incredibly unproductive. That is doing nothing to advance the field of paleontology, Ross's area. Uh, what it's doing is it's exerting a lot of effort in order to be the one who secures this prize. Now, that makes sense from a personal point of view for Ross, right? Ross wants this grant taking Benjamin Hobart out to dinner. Now, it doesn't work, but taking him out to dinner if he thinks it'll increase the probability of winning the grant makes total sense. This is completely logical, but it is also consistent with our idea of rent-seeking. Ross is engaging in activities that aren't adding any productivity to the world. Personally, it makes sense. From the point of view of the well-being of the world, Ross is doing nothing that improves it when taking uh, taking Benjamin Hobart out to dinner, or even for writing the grant. This is common in the political process, right? We could go back to Build Back Better, the Biden major spending bill. All sorts of government contracts are available. And before Biden, right, other entities would 
produce government contracts that would be available. But with all of this government money available, there are a lot of individuals and agencies that will spend a lot of time going after that money. Uh, companies will be f- will be formed, have been formed, to try to win some of the funding here. They're spending time that isn't really doing anything. It's spending time trying to solicit this money. It's not contributing to society. Now, on an individual level, it makes total sense, right? These people are trying to survive. There's a pot of money. They're going after that pot of money, but they are rent seeking. So from an individual sense, it makes a, it really seems logical that they would do this, that all of these entities that are trying to win the government contracts do this, right? It makes total sense. But from a society point of view, if you have thousands of, let's face it, really bright people, and they're spending energy how to win money instead of doing what their craft allows them to do to make the world a better place, that's bad for society. And rent-seeking, part of the political process, will lead to unproductive activities being done. Hope you enjoyed this video. This is part of a series with economic lessons from friends, so please like and subscribe. This one on public choice theory and a really perfect example. So I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, It's probably less fun when we're talking about unethical dealings with governments than a lot of the other topics that we hit. But check out the other videos if you'd like a little bit more, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.